All right, greetings and salutations, all you hardcore MMA fans out there. Welcome to another edition of MMA Technical Analyst Breakdown, aka the MMA Recap. As always, I'm your host, Dan the Wolfman. And guys, this week I'm going to be bringing you four fights uh, from one Reign of Kings in the Philippines. And I'm going to mention and give you details about nine fights of UFC Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Alvarez versus Poirier 2. So first off, I'm actually going to do a little backwards and start with one this week because there's some uh, jiu-jitsu stuff, a lot of jiu-jitsu stuff, uh, grappling stuff I'm going to mention. Um, so anyone into that kind of stuff, learning more about the sport, learning more about grappling, where you train jiu-jitsu, uh, you're going to want to listen up. So guys, uh, first thing I'm going to mention, uh, the Team Lakai member, who I've been supporting Team Lakai and I'm friends on Facebook for years when one first started. I've always supported them. At one point I'm like, hey, you know, I know you guys don't got any money. They're like, hey, we don't got any money. I'm like, hey, maybe I can help you guys with your grappling. You know, um, I've always wanted to see them do well because they fight with heart. They're in shape. Um, they got great kicks. You know, Sanda Wushu style background and um, exciting guys. Uh, so anyway, I know that some of them watch some of my uh, my videos here at catchitsu.com. And Joshua Pansiao, he got back mount with hooks and grabbed this, pulled it behind, and got the hammerlock behind the back. As always, that very un unarticulate blue belt uh, announcer, uh, commentator, color commentator, called it a rear naked chicken wing. Um, it was a hammerlock. Uh, I think hammerlocks have been around for a very, very long time, going back to Haken Schmidt and guys like that. So, um, yeah, that just uh, absolutely kills me. And I know, and I know some people on Twitter were uh, talking about that. Um, I, I got some video of me rolling doing some, some fairly similar stuff. I had one very similar video where I showed four different weight locks from getting that arm and wrist locking and putting it behind the back. I filmed it the Middle East years ago. I can't find it now. I might have lost that one when, I, when it got cropped. But I have two videos um, that, that can be found me and, and rolling doing pretty similar pulling it back uh, that way. Um, okay, now guys in the BJJ world, you're going to want to listen up because I'm going to talk about Gary Tonin. I'm going to talk about Henzo Gracie. I'm going to talk about Shinya Ogi, and then I'm going to go on the UFC. So we got uh, Gary Tonin versus uh, Rahul Raju at Lightweight. Now, before the fight started, probably five hours before the fight started or whatever, I hopped on Twitter, I tweeted to Henzo and Gary, and Gary liked it, um, showing my fight versus Yuki Kondo, um, that, that Henzo maybe might want to learn how to do a straight blast really fast, how to use that to enter the clinch versus Kondo, because it's all about getting to the clinch in that matchup. Um, and he liked that. And then I tweeted him again with a video of my six submissions from back control you don't even know amazing six submissions from back control you don't even know existed something like that um, my, my pretty popular video I think for those six subs I made up um, and showing that exorcist neck crank uh, etc we'll get more to that in a minute so anyway Gary's taking on this Indian fighter it's just only a second MMA fight he didn't fight amateur Indian fighters aren't exactly known for their grappling guys put it that way there's only one black belt in the whole country. He's in a small town. He's like an hour away from Mumbai. There, it's you know even you're in the, any of the three big cities don't even have have real jiu-jitsu outside of a blue belt. So um, anyway, keep that in mind. Not hating on the guy. It's a second fight. Uh, I actually support him a lot, and I think he watches my videos. He's tried some of the stuff in my videos uh, before, um, right after I made the video. So Gary uh, looked bad on the feet the first one and a half minutes of the fight. He had his chin up. So this is what I'm going to talk about, white, le white belt level MMA skills. He was a white, in the first round, he was a white belt in an MMA. He might be a black belt in jiu-jitsu. That doesn't mean you're a black belt in MMA. Very different things, right? Um, he was getting out of position and leaping in on that big left hook. It's like he's hit pads, but like his chin's up in the air, and he's stuck out of position and kind of surprised and stuff. Um, Raju wasn't that awesome on his feet either. Like He kept a pretty decent distance through right hand, but... Um, mostly concerned about the takedown. So, you know, how good can someone striking be if they're so concerned about, uh, you know, the grappling disadvantage? Most people would have that against Twinan, but, you know, some some Indian guy you never heard of, probably not that, you know, awesome of a grappler. Okay, so uh, he does get a double leg uh, against Raju against the cage. Tonin then Victor rolls. This is pretty sweet. Victor rolls for the leg. 
uh, and Tempson said heel hook. Pretty sweet in that it looks cool to the jujitsu nerds, but pretty not sweet in that this puts you in a position where you can get hit. Usually, he had good leg control, didn't keep kept distance, whatever. But again, against a, a better level opponent um, that could put in, like if he was fighting Ben Askren here, and Ben Askren would come into him and be pounding his face, and he'd be caught in some bad positions. Um, so Gary, if you, I'm not hating. I'm trying to help your evolution to to bring the MMA level up to your uh, you know your no gi grappling game. Okay, so now um, yeah, Raju defends pretty well, gets back up. Um, obviously, been working his leg entanglement defense. Um, off a right body kick, kind of lazy body kick, almost on purpose, maybe. Gets caught by Raju, and he, um, Tonin does go in a nice inside heel hook attempt again. Raju defends again, gets back up. Tonin outside leg trip uh, to mount. Ground and pound, but the, end, the round ends. Round two, bit on the ground after a high kick, a high kick attempt. Gary Cannon bobbed and weaved under it and caught it on the shoulder and then up on the ground. Um, he uses that to go into the cradle, um, which is very much like one of my videos, going in the cradle to the inside gravity choke. A couple of my videos, actually. Uh, one I was showing to UFC star Robert Whitaker on one of his partners in uh, Khoi Samui, Thailand. And the other one I filmed in Oregon with uh, Mike Pierce um, after I'd worked with Tavares in Thailand. So... Um, uh, anyway, it looked like he was going for that, that, that gravity choke that I've made up and then passed the leg like I talk about, but he didn't cook him long enough and kind of went just for like a regular mounted guillotine, but at, um, upon mounting there, mounting, there was a bit of a scramble. Um, so cook more there, Gary. Cut off that artery for that 7 to 10 seconds I talk about, you know, 7 8 seconds before passing the hand, and then you can go to five, five finger, 10 finger guillotine, mounted guillotine, cobra neck crank, whatever you want to do from there. Uh, but cook the guy more there first from that cradle. Um, Raju back up, bad striking by both. Raju lands, saw the right hand at the end of the round two. Round three, take down a mount to sloppy mounted triangle and a sloppy mount omoplata attempt. It really was. You're not play grappling in MMA. You have to be MMA grappling. There is a difference. Because higher level opponent, you would pay for these mistakes. Um, I know some of the BJJ nerds that aren't even blue belts are going to, like, whatever. Okay, I'm a, I'm a black belt in BJJ and a black belt in, by, under Gokar Shevich and, and G in the Bell as well. There's only, like, three in the world. Okay, I got four black belts, so I kind of know what I'm talking about. Um, another double leg by Tonin to back control the arm trap. First, like, uh, BJ Penn style trap in that arm, almost like maybe he's going to the crucifix. And then puts the regular hooks in, goes for my exorcist neck crank which uh, we talked about last week, which got one in the PFL last week. We talked about that last week. Uh, Boss Rudin originally kind of came up with it. I instinctually kind of made it better. Shinya Oki was the first to do it at Dream 17. Multiple people have done it since. It seems like Gary probably backstage, you know, stressed out, probably actually looked at my tweet of the video, I think, um, and, and actually tried that because that's the video I saw him, okay? And so he was actually just neck cranking. Um, and he knew what was needed was to get the spine twist. That you can even see it, guys, if you watch the highlights. He kicked his left leg um, to butterfly kick the legs the other way, but he was actually on the side, like a side back guard. He wasn't really on the back. So he wasn't able to reach it. So, like, he did the correct thing, and the reach wasn't there. And so he couldn't really finish that. It was just a neck lock as opposed to twisting the lower body. It's really called neck crank, but neck crank and spine twist. you got to twist the lower legs, and that's how I made this better back in 2009 when I filmed the video. So, uh, couldn't do that. But then he shifts off to the side and then switches to the other side for a rear naked choke with the left arm, so it's sawed side to side. Um, so, so nice job on the finish, really nice finish. I, I'm glad he tried the uh, exorcist. And guys, this, this I know I'm going to get hate online. Really, I think Gary did this because in EBI, right after I filled my... Uh, uh, non-traditional, we're going to talk about that in the, uh, in the UFC actually, another guy tried one of those. Non-traditional side control escapes video series I, f uh, I filmed in Puerto Rico, very popular. Um, right at, and that was at a Matt Serra BJJ, which is kind of affiliated with Henzo, etc. I think maybe Gary saw that because he was trying to funk roll escape out uh, at EBI, but he let the guy get settled and he got stuck there and he got back crucifixed for a second uh, before he escaped. So Gary's like an open-minded guy that seems to try a lot of stuff because he's not just a jiu-jitsu guy. He wrestled before. Actually, his wrestling is kind of degraded a bit. He needs to get back into the wrestling now he's doing MMA, really get kind of resharpen up his wrestling skills again. 
um, needs to uh, definitely keep working on his striking, needs to tactically work on his decision making in MMA. You can kind of get away with some of this like lucky Victor Woolley stuff against a you know fighter from India that you're not going to get away with with the top level guy, nor should he. Because uh, that's why guys fight amateurs. I started fighting pro against the most experienced guy in America at the time. On two weeks' notice, he was eight and eight in the UFC with losses to or eight and eight in MMA with losses to UFC heavyweight stars Dan Severn and Brian Johnson. There wasn't amateur when I started, but my ass is old. So um, that's why guys do amateur. Um, so anyway, um, Gary was a white belt in MMA in that first round. He was a blue belt in MMA in the second and third round. And a nice finish. He needs some coaches around him that aren't yes men to not think just because you're a really awesome grappler that he, he can get away with not really caring about even sharpening his wrestling back to where it should be and, and, and getting a striking and his tactical decision making and everything to be more of an MMA grappler even in the grappling room let alone the overall MMA game. Um, so... If he could even be purple, if he could be blue belt level in the first round, already have his hands up and his chin down, not chin up. If he can have his chin down and do that and be a blue belt in the first round of his next fight and then win in the second or third round looking like a purple belt in MMA, that would be remar remarkable. That would be absolutely amazing in your, only your third MMA fight. Uh, people are very unrealistic with this and they're not very MMA knowledgeable, um, the, the trolls out there. So if he could do that, but that will take real coaches that are MMA coaches and not just grappling coaches. That will take guys that really understand the MMA game and give them that kind of stuff and that kind of striking and everything that he really needs instead of just a little bit of boxing plus jiu-jitsu. It's like people in Thailand, like, oh, Muay Thai and jiu-jitsu, and people all over the world. Muay Thai and jiu-jitsu does not equal MMA. <laughs> MMA is different. Whereas the rocks, the wrestling, the boxing, the in-between, the clinch striking, the judo, the everything, okay? So you can't just do a little bit of boxing and then grappling. Like, uh, yeah, maybe you can because they'll probably get fed fish another two or three fights. But hopefully by another, by his fifth or sixth fight, hopefully one puts him against someone really legit. Um, and you don't want a rude awakening then. I would love to, to help Coach Gary. Yeah, he's, I mean, competition-wise, better grappler than me. But, like, obviously I know a lot about grappling, right? I'm also a black belt. But MMA, I know more than him because I did MMA for 22 years sparring all the top guys around the world, like 600 or so uh, of the top fighters around the world. So I've been with all the top guys and been all over and moved all over and trained all over and picked up the tips and the tricks and the tactical decision making. And that's what he needs. So I got long-winded anyway. I better hurry up. Okay. Um, Henzo Gracie versus Yuki Kondo. Supporter of Henzo Gracie as well, guys. I, uh, in 2000, I, I visited Henzo's in WWE Back then, WWF had me try out for the first Tough Enough. For two months leading up to that, I was on every WWE show seven days a week when it was eight and a half million people watching Raw every Monday. And every other show they had, I had like 20 seconds, 10 seconds on, t on TV. And then in my, uh, the first Tough Enough, that was the first time I was on TV. So I was out there. Henzo was super cool with me, just super cool. Welcome, brother. I got cool pictures of hogs. Didn't charge me a dime. He already knew who I was from, like, the forums for my nickname and everything. And he was like, hey, man, you kind of know street stuff. Go work with that cop over there as a blue belt. Like, go teach him some stuff. Like, Henzo is just, just awesome. So I'm like, really? Okay, Henzo, I'm going to... My, my idea of spearing a guy in the wall to get a short job. Well, yeah, my idea of spearing, yeah. My idea, by the way. My idea. Spearing a guy. Um... Yeah, I have emails going back a long time to another person who made a lot of money. Um, my idea about spearing, I showed uh, uh, this cop. Anyway, a little long-winded today, guys, because I'm tired. Uh, versus Yuki Kondo, guy fought in 2000 when he was king of the world and everyone turned on the fight. I got to fight Kondo, guys. Everyone wonders why, because everyone else was scared as a mofo. Because he sent Solo Barrow, World Jiu-Jitsu multi-champ, through the ring bloody in 22 seconds. So I fought Kondo between Solo Ribeiro and Tito Ortiz. All right, before Kondo fought for the UFC title is when I fought Yuki Kondo. Okay, absolutely nothing happened the first round. These guys are aging. Kondo has not looked very well lately. I, I was there for, uh, I was there live for, I commentated? I think I commentated. Yeah, I commentated his fight where he knocked out uh, a guy, but since then hasn't been so good. He knocked out a 47-year-old guy. 
um, a retired Shudo fighter that had fought in like 15 years. Um, so I, I actually commentated Yuki Kondo and Pancreas on UFC Fight Pass. Uh, but since then, like, he's not the same guy. He used to be very fast, um, but he's very plotting. His stance is too close. It's like kind of like Muay Thai wannabe-ish. And then, no disrespect, but Kondo's past his prime. But of course, Hensel Gracie's 51 years old. Anyway, my point is really nothing at all happened in the first round. I'm glad something did in the second so I could report about this. All respect to both guys getting in there. I'm 41. I'm like wondering if I could take another fight again right now. Um, it takes a lot. Um, anyway, second round, Henzo goes for head outside single. And Kondo looks for the switch, which is kind of a mistake because standing that allows Henzo to scoot to his back, get his back standing. He throws, I think, a little butterfly to the back of the knee, around into the back of the knee, drops on the back, gets the back, and puts in the short choke. I think I'll probably make that the picture here. Choking Kondo really nasty. He finally gets under the chin. What? Short choke right there uh, with a V in the front of the neck, I believe. So, like a short V choke. Um... Congrats, Hensel Gracie. You're still the man. You always put it on the line, unlike uh, some of the others. You always did. Um, oh, and I also saw Henzo training for his Dan Henderson fight when I was there at his academy. It was, it was pretty awesome. Um, so respect to those guys. Gary, I hope you don't take anything I mean offensive. I actually mean it as the, as the best possible. Uh, there's all kinds of haters against me on the net, but obviously I've been around the game a long time. So, you know, just hoping you kind of climb up there so the time you do fight a real top guy probably three fights from now or four fights from now if you fight even like a pretty you, you need to be prepared for that don't 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 let yes man and excuse you know uh, things go to your head when you're getting put up against kind of the lower level guys um, no disrespect to them it's just you know on the, on the international stage we're talking professional athletics here okay Shinyaoki versus Muay Thai fighter Shannon Weirchai um, Shinya again was the first to do that exorcist neck crank um, after seeing it with Ryan Bo, our mutual friend. He saw it on Facebook. Um, yeah, and people said I lied back then. No, no, I didn't. And then, yeah, Shan um, Aoki, I did roll with a few years back at Evolve, uh, guys. Showed him a little magic. And then um, Shinya got a body lock takedown to cool climb him out. Very spider, put his left leg kind of spider climb to mount really nice. Ground pound and elbows. An elbow cut the forehead of. Rear Chai and the ref quick stopped at TKO. Probably because protecting him a little bit from embarrassment, like he wasn't going to get out of the mouth of Shinyoki. Uh, he could have sat there eating elbows all day. So, guys, that's it for one. Um, I try to be open minded and bring you stuff uh, from all kinds of different events. I'd like to bring you the Ryzen 11. I haven't even watched it yet. I don't know if you want me to do Ryzen. I will do it if it turns out it was a cool show. I have no idea. I'm trying to stay offline. Okay, UFC Calgary, Alberta, Alvarez was 482. Nina answer off. This is in Randa, Randa Marcos by use of calf kicks over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. And each week, what do we talk about? Sorry, guys. Yes, I'm a guy or the godfather of calf kicks. I've been preaching it since 2012. First to have videos out on it. First to have videos how to check it, defend it, lift against it, and everything else. And nobody's doing it. Um, and this is, you know, I could probably think of 20 MMA fights at least. Probably 25 um, that have been won primarily on just... Calf kick, just completely won. I mean, other other fights where the leg's been uh, completely destroyed or the tibia fibula has been broken um, by Marlon Narias um, back in uh, WSOF days, etc. There's you know Gil Melendez getting beat. There's been so many fights that have just been um, decided by the calf kick. That it's always worth mentioning. It's like how can you not be prepared for something? It's not new, just because commentators just started talking about it. I've been preaching about it online and videos for a very long time. All right, Dustin Ortiz, first round head kick, knockdown, ground pound K over Nikolai. Very nice for Dustin Ortiz to come back with a head kick after I think previously he got knocked out with a head kick. Um, Dustin Ortiz looking good. Islam Makachev. Ma Ma Makachev. Islam Makachev hit single to double transition at cage on Raging Cajun Johnson to walk to mount and goes to original top wrist lock, key lock grip to arm bar and gets it. So still dry, combat sambo, aggressive going for that submission, got it. Boom. Hakim Dawadu, United's decision by beautiful Muay Thai and Dutch kick, kickboxing combos. Really just ultimately beautiful technical stuff be, between him and um, Adesanya. 
now like to see really high level striking when all these other guys are just throwing bombs and blocking punches punches with their face is is almost is almost funny now it's almost hard for me to even watch uh, MMA now it's so um, kind of pathetic on the technical level not saying they're not great athletes my body's falling off now but on the technical level you know it's great to see that real kind of striking in there um, so nice job by Hakeem Dawadu someone to pay attention to Jordan Mean versus Alex Morano uh, Mean nice sweep and a toes eye pass actually got it so head arm over the head cranking the head sideways I don't do this as much as I probably could because it's kind of mean and if you don't do it mean then you might not get the pass you could actually get arm triangled uh, but he actually did get that pass, and that's something I honestly haven't seen in the UFC before. I saw it attempted the previous week in UFC, believe it or not. But this is the first time I remember it actually working. Um, so pay attention to that. Uh, Moreno almost got a knee pinch sweep, actually. Uh, barely based back up, but, but by, by dropping the guard low on the knees, I just called a knee pinch, like twist uh, sweep. Almost got that, so grapplers out there, pay attention to that. Um, you know, one day, guys, when I get clips, ESPN, hook me up, give me a board behind me and a marker. This will be really cool. Um, do, 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 do. I lost my place. Sorry, guys. Um, Moreno almost got that knee pin sweep and then got side mounted, and he tried my untraditional side control. Non-traditional, that's what I call it in the videos. Non-traditional side control octopus escape. So grabbing the arm and trying to roll back and cook it with his legs, he tried that. Um, that's only been successful once in the UFC, but um, awesome. Um, so cool that he tried my octopus escape that I put in that non-traditional side control escape series and filmed in Japan um, without the octopus a while ago. Uh, round two, mean double leg on top. Round three, back and forth, mean a big ass, guillotine and anaconda attempts by both basically, mean unanimous decision. A little water break. Alexander Hernandez versus Olivier Abel Moussier at light the weight. First round, Hernandez hustled and getting off first. Second round, Hernandez shoots with a kind of Koichi. Um, between the legs, which got him overextended, Oliver sprawls, lands on the top turtle crucifix. Hernandez postures out of it as he's coming up. Um, Olivier uh, grabs that double wrist lock Kimura, flips him over, rolls through, gets on the top half guard. That was a really sweet scramble. Um, BJJ Reddit's got it up there, Twitter's got it up, so that you, you might see a little clip of that. It's pretty cool. Um, later on, they end up in Russian Cowboy or Butt Mount. We've talked about that a few videos ago. Should have just went for the damn knee bar. Go for it when you're there, homie. You had the position two on two perfect. Let's go for that knee bar and kill it. Yeah, at one point he had both knees. I would have double knee barred that guy like crazy. Um, uh, but then twisting out of it, he messed up and overly anxiously kind of jumped his left leg looking for a, a same crucifix position again ended up on bottom guard um, which really was a, a mistake versus pulling guard um, DC champ champ said pulling guard kind of was but like he didn't intentionally do it um, but yes was a huge mistake uh, round three Oliveira got double on top and when passing into sideways or reverse half like case a half reverse half reverse case I should say um, Hernandez sat up and did kind of an octopus guard escape and then turned into a back take. So that, that looked really sweet. I think there's some video or gifs going around to that as well. Uh, unanimous decision for Hernandez. Hernandez looked sharp, man. He hustled the whole fight. He was in shape. Joanna Jonjacek. Joanna J, former champion, we can call her. Joanna, former champion, because she always wanted to be called Joanna champion before. Versticia Torres is straw weight. Round one, clean striking against Sage. Slight age to Joanna. Round two, Joanna outstriking, but 